What is up everybody? It is Dweebo here and I am making a video that has been on my heart and on my mind for a couple days now. I want to, in this video, explore two reasons why I think the industry is where it's at, kind of the reality of the situation that we're in, and also in on a good note. So that's kind of what this video is. Uh, if you're a fan of the channel, we do a podcast every month, and we actually kind of decided to try to not do that this month. Uh, and this is kind of what I'm about to talk to talk about is kind of the reason why. And we'll go into that uh, as we go into the video. Kind of, it'll it'll meld meld together. That's not a word. Melt together. The first reason that I think the industry is kind of the worst I've seen it since 2008, which was the Great Recession. Um, that was the Wii 360, PS3, and there was just so many. That was the first time I got, we got to see kind of an avalanche of these remakes. Games were very casual because of the Wii. There was tutorials at the beginning of every game. And for someone that, you know, I, I kind of grew up in the NES, playing with the NES because we didn't have that much money as a, as a kid to afford, you know, getting games consoles on day one. I should have had the PS1 at that time. Um, that was kind of my generation. So I had the NES. I had the SNES. I got to experience all that. So going up into the Wii area, Wii era, everything was casual and um, we kind of got some some uh, bad games during that era, I want to say. There was some good, but people don't remember the, the, the junk we got kind of thrown into. We had the um, um, expansion passes were kind of, that was just shocking. We had the freaking horse armor DLC. There was a lot of stuff that I, as you know, someone growing up in games, we got the whole game, you got character unlocks in games, and that was the first time we got a lot of bull crap ever that I had seen in my lifetime. And I think in the industry to that point, the worst we had seen ever. Um, people tend to forget that stuff. So I'm, I'm trying to give context to leading up to, to now. So post that era, we got the PS4, Xbox One had some trouble. Um, we got the Switch, Wii U, Wii U had some trouble and stuff, but um, kind of par for the course, nothing really you know, to, to talk about that was like very bad, but now we're in a place where, you know, post COVID, it's like we're seeing game studios close down on a weekly basis. We're seeing a ton close down from the end of last year going into this year, a lot of, of them closing this year. We saw the buyouts of Activision um, from Xbox uh, for Microsoft and stuff like that. So what we're seeing now is, is I think just as bad, if probably worse, probably the worst it's been that I have been alive for. And the reason I think that is paramount to all of this, and this kind of goes outside of gaming, but it just, I'm trying to get my thoughts out there on the reality of the situation, right? Like, why are we here? I'm kind of into finances and the economy and all that stuff. It just, it tanked. And what happened was we had this influx of cash. We had all this cash I'm going to try to keep this light because we're just going to get back to the video games. You have this influx of cash from COVID, all those stimulus checks, all this stuff, and all these tech industries, it's not just video games, went on a spending spree. They got all these freaking, they hired everybody they could, and they they ballooned so large, and so did video game companies, Because, and I don't blame them totally. I blame, blame them partially, but if you have that much cash flowing around, you have to spend, you have to keep up, you want to keep stockholders happy, all this, this stuff. But they just went nuts to a point where they thought the good times were going to last forever. And I just don't know why no one had the foresight to just see that this party was going to end at some point, that this cash is not infinite. And um, that's caused these mass layoffs, these mass studio closures that we have now. And I think in all of that, you're seeing an avalanche, again, like the Great Recession, these avalanche of remakes. We've always had remakes post, you know, the Wii area, Wii era, the 360 era, all that stuff, but this has just been crazy. The ports of like PS4 games uh, to PS5 games. We just got, I think Last of Us 2 was the one that just cracked everybody up because it was like, there's no difference here. This just came out. We just freaking played this, it felt like. And this doesn't really look that different. There's not much here, but it's it's companies kind of just, they are digging wherever they can to, to get capital, to survive, um, to make, to be able to pay their staff. Um, that's what they're, they're, they're losing kind of this dead weight. Sorry. Uh, it's kind of probably offensive, but of these, of layoffs of people, maybe they didn't need to survive. 
to make the company work, but all of that hurts morale, all of that hurts creativity. You had COVID where you were locked away, and this is um, just personal opinion with the return to office stuff. I think working from home is amazing, but I think for gaming in any creative space, it just hurts creativity. You don't have people, and you, you hear in all these documentaries, you can watch these documentaries of where people say, hey, somebody from the sound department came and they had an ideal, and they just spoke it out, and, and they immediately be able to go to this you know, studio or this part of the department, and they immediately implemented it and, and all that stuff. You lose that from um, when you were locked down in COVID or, or only in um, Zoom calls um, and virtually working. It just kills that, that creative layer. Now, for 95% of other stuff, I'm, I'm with people. The return to office stuff is stupid. But that hurt. Um, the layoffs, all that morale stuff, that hurts. And you just have this industry that is constantly day after day after day after day. And this is the first big reason. And the number one stuff is, is the economy as a whole. And COVID, I think, has absolutely just, you know, struck the industry hard. I've never seen it this bad. And it, it was continual, you know, subject on our podcast. Uh, and that's about, to, I'm about to get into the second point here. But it's kind of come to a head. And I think that's, that's number one. It's just in co- uh, the economy and COVID just destroyed a lot of industries and definitely the gaming industry. Number two, you have these influencers. You have YouTubers like myself. We got a thousand subscribers, which we're very thankful for, but we're, no, we're big by no means. Uh, we're not big by no means. But what happens is you have these bigger influencers that they're, you know, just like COVID and like everybody else during COVID. And again, I'm not, that's why I'm not blaming just the, the gaming side of things. They think they're big forever. They think these YouTubers think they're going to get these numbers forever from COVID. People locked down in their houses or um, that the good times are going to last forever. They go out, they have these crazy cost of living stuff. And what happens is they get locked into, they, oh, oh shoot, we, oh, we have to talk about this. Well, negativity sells and they see that. Oh, well, then I'm going to talk about this woke game, and this game's gone woke. And this game's gone whatever, and this game is stupid because of this now, and whatever. And negativity sells, and it gets clicks. So that's one thing. But on top of that, and this is something that we fell into as a channel that I had, it was like, well, we got to hit pause, was even if you're more positive that we tr- we strive to be, if you're more wanting to talk about stuff on the podcast and there's news and stuff, all the news ends up being negative. There's another round of layoffs. Microsoft's bringing games to PlayStation now. Uh, PlayStation 5 Pro is too expensive. Nobody can afford it. Um, just stupid thing after stupid thing after stupid thing. And it just it comes to a head where it's like, you know, you're, you're, you're stuck in a death spiral, right? The industry is stuck in a, I, I think, like, social media-wise and the, the news that you're presented about the industry is stuck in this death spiral of, already bad stuff of layoffs, um, all that stuff. But then what, what do we talk about? Well, the news is bad, so that, whatever. Oh, well, negativity is actually helping my channel and pushing followers and stuff and, and getting eyes on my videos if I'm TikTok people or, or running live or whatever. That's the thing that people want to talk about. Um, and then also, that's all there is to talk about, so you're kind of stuck. And that goes into, I, I want to talk about our podcast. So I pulled the guys aside before this last podcast we filmed, and I said, what are we doing? Are, are, are we, I, I had to kind of, you know, dive deeper. Am I just being negative? Am I just getting older and kind of getting old man yells at the cloud kind of thing? What's going on here? And what I realized was, you know, that can happen when you get older, and we're trying to constantly check ourselves as we get older, and we're not crapping on these new things that the kids enjoy and stuff. Um, new people come into the gaming space, and kind of poo-pooing on everything. But I realized I was telling them, I said, no, I, th- I think there's something more to it. I think the industry sucks. And when we're talking about news and there's, we're trying to find out content or things that we want to talk about, it's just all this bad stuff continually. Um, to a point I've never seen this level of just badness, like with the layoffs and all this negativity and stuff. And I don't think that was anything on purpose. It just was the news. It was this new thing that just sucked that, you know, it's on everybody's mind. We want to talk about it on the podcast because it's on everybody's mind. It's on everybody's channels that are also talking about it. We're trying to give thoughts on that. But it just is this, it just sucks. It's not fun to, to watch. It's not fun to whatever to listen to um, for me personally. And I was just getting sick of it. Um, and that's nothing on us. Again, 
I think that's just the reality. And again, this video is the reality and talking about the reality of the industry um, there. In editing this part, I missed one mini segment here that I wanted to mention. And that is that along with COVID and then these companies and the games not being able to come out because of COVID primarily, we also have lost E3. There was some mismanagement with E3. That's a whole other video. But losing E3 and this domino effect of like everybody going to these Nintendo Direct style videos to get hype about their games, I think that has that is also that was the other kind of point. There's actually maybe a two and a half points here that has killed the social media side of it and this hype train, um, along with people talking about the negative stuff. If we would have this hype, if you go back to the 2010s, oh my gosh, the channel our channel was kind of built on the reactions and stuff that we were like legitimately authentically excited about and we lost all of that and covid and e3 especially was the death kill of all that stuff going away but how fun was that you know that era and that kind of that kind of really built up the hype and the, and the love for games so that was the other mini point i wanted to mention that that kind of swirled around with the negativity stuff too we just we lost the excitement level and the hype train has never been the same from those live events so my last point I wanted to have some actually, I wanted to have some good stuff. I wanted to actually, you know, shine some light on some good things about the industry right now. And that first thing is, and this is what I told the guys, I said, you know, things are absolutely just abysmal right now. However, I think we're getting the most refined, good games in gaming history right now. We've got Elden Ring. We've got Tears of the Kingdom. We've got Baldur's Gate 3. We've got Cyberpunk started out bad. But I think people just realize, wow, that game is just incredible in the, the, um, the scale of it all. Um, we got more recent games like Red Dead Redemption 2, which people still play to this day, are finding out things about that just so much detail was put into. Um, we got Grand Theft Auto 6 that's coming out, which looks to be incredibly detailed, just unbelievably designed of, uh, of a game. It took forever, but that's going to, I think, without a doubt, probably be the biggest like game maybe ever. Um, and, the, and, the, and the money that went into it. All that to say, like, there's some exciting stuff, and that's why I was, I was telling those guys, like, even though this year is kind of a bummer for me, I played Final Fantasy VII freaking Rebirth all year. That was, like, one of my favorite games I've ever played. So I'm, I'm, I'm in a mix of emotions. I'm having all these bad news, bad things with games, nickel and diming you in games, weird, like, weird stuff keeps happening, the free-to-play kind of stuff, and, pe and everybody kind of chasing the dollar... But then you're also getting the best of the best. Like some of these these games I'm playing, I'm like, I cannot believe that I'm alive right now and getting to experience this for the kid that started out on the NES. This is just an incredible gift of a time to be living in to be able to play these games. Swirling in garbage around it um, that I just mentioned. So what's next? I think the industry has got to even out. We've got to, the sustainability, and if you watch a good documentary to watch on, this is the new Last of Us Part 2 documentary they put out. <clears throat> I don't know if it's the Part 2 one. I think this might be. Oh, no, it is Part 2. A documentary on YouTube from Naughty Dog. They talk about how the game was too big, and that was my biggest complaint with the game itself. But as a game developer, they said this is just, this is too big of a game. It also sustainable wise is just not sustainable long term. So I think that's that's number one is what's next is 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 Naughty Dog's already figured that out and they're already going in a direction where they're changing their studio to make games that are more sustainable, smaller games, and I'm totally okay with that. They, these games are too long. They're like, I don't have the time. Maybe it's getting older too, but they're too long and they also put too much strain and there's too much crunch in the industry. That's always been a problem. But I think with with COVID and all this other stuff, there's too much pressure pushing down on somebody trying to make games and, and, and at these studios. I think part two of that is we're trying to balance out on our channel. We're trying to do our part of, hey, something sucky happens. We got to talk about it. You know what I mean? Like we're not going to only be this kind of living in la la land of games and only be positive. We're all also going to be critical on the things that deserve to be critical. However, when we're in an environment when everything deserves to be <laughs> criticized, rightfully so, I think it's okay to ignore some of that, to cut that down and balance it out. So that means we're not gonna do a podcast where, unless that's the month where it's all positive, we're definitely gonna criticize, but we you need to um, 
have a sandwich, uh, a good balanced sandwich of like crappy thing. Hey, what did you enjoy this month? What was cool? What do you want to like encourage people to like check out movies wise, TV shows or video games wise? And I think we're going to try to do better on that of just like, we, we just got to cut. Um, we're just going to like, you know, because we have notes coming to the podcast and stuff that we, we're all kind of submitting to. And I think we just have to like make a call and say, we're just not going to talk about that. That's been talked to death or let's, this is more important. We don't have to talk about Game Studio C closing again for the 50th time or, or their crappy move they've done for the 50th time. It's not worth talking about. So I think that's what we're going to do on, to do our part is balance that out and keep good and bad. You have to have that balance. But yeah, that's the video. That's kind of what I wanted to lay out to you guys and see what you guys think. Is, is that pretty accurate? Is that what do you think is going on? What are your thoughts? What do you think can help the industry? Been gaming my whole life. Love the love love video games. Right now it's kind of a, a downer, kind of a downer. But at the same time, very good games are coming out. Very, very good games are still coming out, guys. So hope you guys enjoy them. Hope you guys like the video. Subscribe. Check us out um, on Twitter on Twitter or X. It's called X now, whatever. Dwee Bros. Check us out on there. And we I will see you again for another video. It's been a while since I've done this. Let me know what you think. See you next time. Bye-bye.